Hello everyone, today we talk about chemical recycling. What is chemical recycling? The chemical recycling chain is very young. Most of the industrial plants on the market are in a pilot phase and some large companies are already starting to draw conclusions. The development of this technology on an industrial scale is expected to begin in a five years period, 2025-2030. In a few years, yet addressing this issue cannot concern the future. When the choices are already made, we will have little to choose. We must understand today, in the present, if and what space to reserve for the development of this technology, in its effective utility for the development of circular economy. There are many Italian territories that are dealing with proposals from companies that want to build these industrial plants in Sicilia, Gela, Liguria, for example. We want to try to understand more about this technology. We will do it in an international perspective, thanks uh, to the invaluable uh, contribution of our guest today, Janek Kvank, member of the staff of Zero Waste Europe, participated in the publication of a study published uh, in 2019, entitled El Dorado of Chemical Recycling. I'm Manuela Leone, I define myself as environmental weaver, and uh, this is Waste Revolution in Progress, the format that shows you how, with a small and large step, we can build a society free from waste. Sigla. Janek Vang, thank you for joining us today and welcome. Uh, well, thank you so much for inviting Manuela. It's really pleasure Thanks. to be here. Thanks for this time together with us, Italia Che Cambia. Janek Vang is, the, is a staff member of Zero Waste Europe, an organization that works to support the Zero Waste movement and to drive ambitious policies at the European level. Within this international team, Janek is uh, the program coordinator of, for climate, energy and air pollution. The, he coordinates uh, the work uh, of active support advocacy on climate and energy policy toward the um, European Union institution. And uh, in matter relating uh, to the treatment uh, of the end of life waste. Before joining Zero Waste Europe, he worked for a friend of the Heart Europe and uh, Justice and Environmental, uh, where he was the responsible um, for developing strategy plan partnership. In his presentation, he writes that uh, he joined Zero Waste because he wanted to be part of an activist movement to share solution that preserve our planet and our future. To share solution. I could not resist the desire to listen his point of view and deal with such a new topic in the waste management scenario, such as the chem chemical rec recycling. Hanek, let's start from the beginning. Can you explain to us uh, we, uh, what chemical recycling is? Yeah, of course. Uh, so first of all, there is no official definition of what is chemical recycling, uh, which is the source of a lot of confusion. Uh, at the moment, um, uh, we don't, you know, when we, when we talk about chemical recycling, we we think that we are talking about one uh, thing, but in reality, it's a lot of things, a lot of different technologies that have a very different uh, impacts and they can do very different things. So we are hoping that um, the upcoming revision of the Waste Product Directive will bring some clarity on this. Anyhow, um, as I said, chemical re recycling re refers to a range of technologies. 
overall, uh, what I can say is that all these technologies, uh, they have uh, in common the aim to break plastics, which is uh, consists of polymer, into its smaller constituents, uh, so-called uh, monomers, which are like mo molecules. And in this process, uh, the contaminants are removed, and then the monomers, ideally, should be turned back to polymers, uh, or sometimes also uh, other chemicals. Thus, talking about the waste to chemical or chemical recycling uh, mean uh, talking about the same process? Well, I guess it, it depends on uh, who's speaking. Uh, I, in general, I would say that chemical recycling promoters uh, refer to plastic to uh, chemicals. So it's, uh, it's not really, it's quite a narrow focus. We normally talk about plastics to chemicals or plastic to plastics. Um, in, in some other continents, uh, sometimes chemical recycling can also uh, be used in the context of plastic to fuels, but this is not in, in, accepted in the, in the European Union. So when most of the time we talk about uh, chemical recycling, we really refer to plastic to plastics or sometimes plastic to chemicals processes. Um, just to clarify, in, in the EU, um, particularly in the, in the waste product directive, uh, the recycling uh, means any uh, recovery operation where materials such as plastics are uh, either reprocessed into products, materials or substances. Therefore, um, you could also consider um, plastic to chemicals as, as, as chemical recycling. Chemical recycling be a treatment only for plastic, or can it also be usual to treat residual waste? So um, I would say uh, um, most of the technologies, uh, you know, when we refer to chemical recycling, they actually are very. They have a very narrow uh, focus in terms of they can only accept very specific type of plastics. Um, but in, in but there are uh, at least one technology that could potentially also deal with residual waste, um, um, so-called classification. But it's a it's a very 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 uh, energy intensive process, and um, you don't get plastic as as an uh, output. You to get other chemicals. So yes, I mean, you could say that uh, yes and no. I, most of the time when you talk about chemical recycling, it's not really about dealing with the residual waste. It's, it's uh, most of the time it's plastics, specific plastics. Um, I not agree with you because in Italy, more time it uh, means uh, <laughs> residual waste. Uh, I heard a lot of time uh, this uh, uh, definition. So, is who referring to chemical recycling of residual waste wrong? So indeed, as you, as you say, uh, uh, one of the issues that we have is uh, when you look at uh, historically, uh, um, when, when people started to talk about chemical recycling, I, I think I remember it happened more or less in 2018. And it was the, really the high time of when we talked about uh, plastic pollution uh, and suddenly um, suddenly people started, and particularly industry, started to talk about chemical recycling as a solution to uh, this plastic pollution. But since year, years have passed, uh, we, there is a more and more information that chemical recycling can only um, deal with uh, certain types of plastics. So it cannot be really a solution to uh, residual waste, even though, you know, sometimes you still hear um, some claims that this can be done, uh, you know, as a, it could be as a solution uh, uh, also to residual waste. But in reality, um, it's not. So many chemical recycling plants uh, currently exist more or less in Europe. Uh, um, what are the most advanced experience? Okay. So uh, when, when it comes to um, facilities um, at the industrial level, and then we can really talk about uh, maybe uh, two two plants uh, in Spain. So these are run, uh, run by uh, uh, Plastics Energy, and they are doing pyrolysis. Uh, all the other facilities um, are mainly at the lab 
scale, meaning that it's very ex experimentary, or in sometimes maybe they are trying to start to scale it up uh, to the pilot level. Um, there are hundreds of them, but they are all at the lab scale, really. So it's it's not really uh, at the at the industrial level. And I just wanted to point out that um, when we talk about chemical recycling. Um, we often talk about pyrolysis. This is the technology that is promoted mostly, and it's mostly promoted by, by petrochemicals. So you see that actually a lot of partnerships um, focus on the, on the pyrolysis. And at the moment, we, uh, we most of the projects uh, that are kind of promoted, they are sort of at the lab scale. And maybe there are some investments that are being made to have them uh, in different countries, but they don't uh, exist yet. What are the impacts of chemical recycling on the environment uh, uh, about these uh, industrial plants uh, that we have now? So indeed, uh, uh, when it comes to the environmental impacts, um, then most of the uh, most of the focus has been on um, on showing um, that uh, chemical recycling is sort of good for climate. So there have been a quite a number of um, life cycle assessments out there. Um, I think they are, we have reviewed uh, four or five of them. And um, so they claim that chemical recycling, and when they talk about chemical recycling, they, they mostly refer to pyrolysis. They claim that it's better than, uh, um, for example, uh, making plastics from uh, words in uh, uh, feedstock, a fossil feedstock. But when you look at into the the life cycle assessments, we actually uh, we, we reviewed uh, the four uh, um, the mostly most commonly cited uh, life cycle assessments, and we found that there's a lot of uh, misleading statements. In fact, uh, European Chemicals Agency uh, published a study in uh, in November 2020 where they stated that there is a very little knowledge about the abilities of those different chemical recycling processes to eliminate, uh, uh, for example, the substances of concern. And in order to make sound conclusions, and they recommend doing more investigations at chemical recycling plants uh, in the coming years. And um, uh, for example, in our study, we, um, we, uh, we look at particularly uh, what the pyrolysis can do uh, in comparison, for example, with the waste incineration. And we found uh, that out of 19 um, impact categories, um, in, in fact, waste incineration performed better. Um, so we can see that um, the chemical recycling is really uh, um, very difficult and, and, and will likely have a uh, quite a lot of impact on the environment and therefore it's really really important to um, to study those impacts before we we start scaling them up thank you Hanek. and uh, um, a few weeks ago a proponent of the multinational veolia made a very strong statement uh, regarding the results of their experimentation on the chemical recycling of plastic uh, we can read uh, that uh, at the end of the process uh, the recovered material is only 22 percent of the incoming material it means 22 percent of circularity so the 78 uh, percent the rest uh, ends up uh, lost uh, or in fuel. Uh, it seems that uh, even the USA Congress uh, is started to ask for uh, funding uh, to be removed uh, from this technology, uh, which has proven to have uh, little to circulate. Uh, are these statements uh, significant for uh, you? Uh, what is international scenario? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um... Um, so, uh, as I said before, uh, most of the time when we talk about chemical recycling, uh, people really talk about the pyrolysis, and it's mainly promoted by by petrochem petrochemical uh, facilities. And and pyrolysis process uh, can really deal with uh, two types of uh, polymers, which are so-called polyolefins, and um, and the current process. 
requires that you will take the pyrolysis oil and you send it into refinery and, and after refinery process you will send it to the cracker and in, it, in this process you lose uh, about 90 percent um, of, of the material so you are really left with about 10 percent and uh, according to for example lux research um, pyrolysis in uh, has an overall polymer yield of only about nine percent so so it we can't really call it uh, a circular uh, process because you are losing most of it in the in the process. In a recent paper uh, written by Zeroways Europe, um, uh, six principles uh, and their translation into practice are uh, reported, so that we can uh, approach the issue of uh, plastic treatment uh, within a system uh, that aim uh, to create a circular economy. In uh, one of these, uh, uh, it is stated that. Uh, in order uh, for a process to be classifi classified as uh, chemical recycling, uh, it would have to convert 80% of plastic in, uh, into new product. Uh, can uh, you explain us uh, better this point? Yes. Um, so for us, um, we think um, plastic uh, plastic recycling uh, at the moment has a quite a bit of problem. A lot of plastics is not recyclable. And what we see is that uh, the new technologies that are being promoted, particularly, as I said, uh, pyrolysis process, they yield uh, in terms of uh, how much plastics you can get out of it. It's, it's very, very low. And therefore, we, we, we have our concerns about if this can really play a role in a, in a, in a more circular economy. Therefore, we, uh, we recommend um, in our principles paper to really focus on uh, converting most of the plastics into new products and and it should be at least 80 percent otherwise you would have a technology that uh, mostly produces uh, fuels and and most of the materials will be leaked out of um, of the economy and 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 yeah so in, indeed we, we 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 included this principle as one of the key principles uh, as a part of our our paper and i think it's it's really important um, that we we would not um, focus on technologies that cannot do that because there are some other technologies other chemical recycling technologies that actually have a much higher higher yield but they also have their own challenges uh, the paper of uh, Zero Waste Europe um, talks about the urgency of adopting uh, a precautionary approach uh, in inserting new recycling techniques with uh, the directives. Uh, what is the status of uh, chemical recycling in Europe today? Uh, how does Europe uh, view chemical recycling? Yeah. Um, so there is a lot of hype about chemical recycling since 2018 there have been a lot of interest and we see um, um, it's appearing in different uh, legislative and policy documents now and uh, there are a lot of studies being done for example by the by the european commission particularly the joint research center that is currently working on two different uh, studies when it comes to chemical recycling and uh, and we we also hear a lot of uh, investments being uh, uh, planned or made. Um, unfortunately, um, when it comes to uh, the status quo, um, uh, as 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 we we you you well know that uh, most of the projects are still at the very lab scale or or maybe in a pilot scale, and so um, and and also the the technologies are not regulated, meaning that there is a question on on how these technologies can actually play uh, the role in, um, in recycling. Uh, hopefully this will change um, soon with the revision of, um, of the Waste Framework Directive. Um, yeah, I, I, I think most of the discussion is, is, is really happening in a, in a very narrow circle. So it's, it's most of time, uh, um, uh, industry and maybe the commission so i think it's really important to bring this discussion to um, 
to uh, to to people um, and in order to really understand uh, what is chemical recycling and and as i said that most of this 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 uh, discussions is is um is led by uh, petrochemical companies that see plastics as sort of their lifeline um, as you know um, due to the climate emergency we are starting to phase out fossil fuels and and now some of those companies they see this as an opportunity for them to continue their business as usual yeah i hope that was clear uh, yeah <laughs> very clear and uh, so uh, then there is a question uh, of decarbonization carbon footprint uh, zero waste visions uh, of fuel converted plastic does not believe that the plastic fuel conversion is in line with the european decarbonization process uh, the report states that uh, since plastics are mainly produced from fossil fuel fuels derived from plastic are a form of uh, fossil fuel the carbonization the decarbonization path undertaken by the european union uh, exclu uh, excludes this chemical recycling solution uh, have to do it yeah point okay so in, indeed when it comes to um, uh, chemical recycling then uh, uh, some of the technologies uh, that exist, um, they are very similar uh, to uh, plastic to fuels, um, such, such as pyrolysis and gasification. Indeed, you can do both things and you can either uh, produce fuels or you can try to produce uh, materials and particularly chemicals. And um, they have been around for more than a decade, actually several decades already. And until now, they have been mainly used for uh, to produce fuels so what is new is that they now try to uh, to make plastics out of it um, and what is important is is that the focus is really on on not making fuels and materials and and uh, and, and the reason for that is that when you when you when you try to produce fuels uh, from plastics then these are not low carbon fuels as sometimes claimed in fact, um, uh, a recent briefing by, by Gaia found that uh, fuels made of plastics produce a higher uh, emissions um, in comparison, with, for example, with a diesel. So yes, um, so if you want to decarbonize our economies and particularly the transport sector, we cannot start making fuels out of plastics because that's, um, that's contrary to, what's, uh, to, um, to our goal to have a net zero emissions. To hear you, it seems very simple. <laughs> what is the way that Zero Waste Europe uh, proposes to efficiently address the issue of plastics? Yeah, I think it's quite quite simple. There's a lot of plastics that could simply uh, phased out. Um, for example, particularly the flexible packaging, which is used for um, um, for example, for fruits and vegetables, this can be phased out. And we estimate that about 20% of plastics could be simply phased out because they are so-called unnecessary plastics. And then um, a lot of plastics and, and what we really think uh, should be the future is the reuse. Because of, um, and the reason for, for that is that since plastics, is it's very difficult to recycle. Um, it degrades, it's not like a paper or metal. It, it degrades, um, it's, you will have a very low yields. So the, the, the best option to have for, for plastics is to move uh, towards reuse. And we estimate that that could have actually very high percentage. It could be somewhere around 30% uh, of uh, particularly packaging could be uh, uh, reused. And then what is left um, should be, first of all, um, recycled. Of course, all the reusable plastic should be also recyclable. And then very little of this should be chemically recycled. Thank you, Yannick. Uh, 
in conclusion, Janek, uh, would you like to give a message or advice uh, to those who listen to us uh, um, on how to deal uh, with this issue of uh, chemical recycling uh, in uh, our territory? Yes. So, um, so if it's specifically about chemical recycling, I, 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 my focus uh, or my advice would be let's have it as a as a last option when uh, when materials when plastics is already too degraded or maybe too contaminated then it can have a some role but as i said it's you know since the yields um, uh, are very very low it cannot become the first option it should always be as the last resort Hanek, i'm very pleased to have you with us today Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, thanks for the tools that you share with us. Very important. I see you in two weeks. This is uh, Waste Revolution in Progress, the format will show you how with small and large steps we can build a society free from waste.